Hello guys. So I get this question a lot about how a couple can conceive a particular gender or sex. So I decided to make this video because I believe it can help bust the meat and stay the fact about gender or sex selection. But before we dive in, if you are new here or you are yet to subscribe, please don't just watch and leave. Kindly subscribe to this channel, like our videos, share them and make your comments. My name is Wally Olabubwe, I'm a medical doctor and a reproductive health advocate. You're welcome. Here's a little background information on how a child's gender is determined. So, the man has two sex chromosomes represented by letters X and Y. While the woman also has two sex chromosomes represented as the letters X and X. So when these two people come together to make a baby, each one donates a chromosome. So the woman has only an X chromosome to donate, while the woman has an, the man has an option of donating either an X or a Y. So if the man donates an X to the woman's X, that is forming an XX, which is a girl child if the man donates a y it forms an xy which is a male or a boy child so ultimately sex determination depends on what the man brings to the table unfortunately the man has no control on what he brings to the table it is solely determined by nature so you see there's no need blaming the woman for conceiving a particular gender in fact, there's no need blaming anyone at all for having a particular gender. The only scientifically proven method of sex selection is IVF plus pre-implantation genetic testing. Big grammar but simple explanation. This simply means that many eggs are collected from the woman and fertilized outside in the laboratory along with the man's sperm. This produces multiple tiny babies called embryos. Small samples are taken from these embryos to know the sex. Once the sex is known, the male and the female embryos are separated and the desired gender are transferred to the woman's womb to be carried to term. This sounds so awesome. Yes, it's actually a beautiful sight to behold, but it comes with a huge financial burden. This leads us to other methods based on the theories proposed by Dr. Shetel. Dr. Shetel is a gynecologist who practiced in the United States in the 60s. His theories were based on his work on the human sperm, where he discovered that the sperm carrying the Y chromosome or the boy chromosome is faster and has a shorter lifespan when compared to that carrying the X chromosome or the girl chromosome. The first thing he proposed is the timing of sexual intercourse. So he believes that if you are trying for a male child, try as much as possible to have sexual intercourse as close as possible to the time of ovulation, say a day or two to that time of ovulation. This is because it is believed that the Y chromosome or the boy chromosome travels faster and is likely going to reach the egg before the X or the girl chromosome. This increases the likelihood of having a male child. And if you are trying for a girl child, have sexual intercourse about two to four days to the time of ovulation. This simply means that by this time, the sperm carrying the Y chromosome probably would have died off, leaving only that carrying the X chromosome to wait and fertilize the egg when it is released. He also proposed that certain sex positions favor a particular gender over the other. For example, the missionary position is said to favor having a girl child over having a boy child. This is because this position creates a longer distance for the sperm to travel and by this time the male sperm most likely would have died before reaching the egg. This favors production of a girl child over that of the boy child. For the male child, he proposed the rear entry, that is the doggy position, which, which provides a shorter distance for the sperm to travel, and this favors production of 
the male child. In addition to this, he also talked about the depth of penetration and he suggested that deep penetration encourages the position of the sperm close to the cervix. This provides a shorter distance for the sperm to travel to reach the egg. This favors production of boy child. Dr. Shetu's method boasts of about 75% success rate, but many individual studies do not confirm this figure. A few couples have attested to the success rate of this method, but this is yet to be proved. Though these methods are controversial, they remain harmless and with little or no financial implication. Why not give it a try? You may just be part of the lucky people that it may work for. In conclusion, IVF and pre-implantation genetic testing still remains the only scientifically proven method of sex selection. Natural sex selection is simply based on probability or chance. Have you learned anything today? If yes, kindly like this video. Share the videos to as many people as possible and then drop your comments or questions in the comment box below. Thank you so much for watching this video to the end. I'll see you in my next video. Till then, bye.